Hello, and welcome to Bowden Construction Company. I'm Weldon Barker, Director of Safety for Bowden. Our company has been a vital part of our community here in the Inland Northwest since our beginning in 1944. We pride ourselves on quality construction and our commitment to a safe working atmosphere for all. At Bowden, our number one value is safety. and We've established a comprehensive health and safety program designed to communicate standards, best practices, and raise awareness of all aspects of safety in the workplace for your protection. The goal of this orientation is to introduce some key safety rules and concepts that you will be required to know and adhere to when working on any Bowden project. After this orientation, if you have any questions about safety, please feel free to reach out to the Bowden superintendent at your location. Thank you for your attention, and we're glad to have you on board. Let's get started. The goals of this program are to prevent accidents and maintain a safe workplace for all employees, to protect personnel, the public, and property from injury, damage, or loss, to educate all employees on the safe conduct of their work, and to comply with applicable laws and regulations governing job safety and accident prevention. By now, you've received a copy of the Bowton General Safety Manual. This handbook contains many of our company policies and safety guidelines. We'll go over some of these during this orientation. This handbook is yours. Please keep it for reference, and if you have any questions, please talk with your supervisor. COVID-19. All personnel entering a Bowton job site are required to check in and conduct a daily health check prior to starting their shift. To reduce touch points, protect personal information, and verify compliance with state and federal requirements, Bowton uses a QR code for the questionnaire portion, which can be conveniently accessed with any mobile device, such as a cell phone. Thermometers are also available at every job site and must be used by each person daily to verify temperatures are within allowable ranges prior to entry. Social distancing at a minimum of six feet is required at all times, unless executing a task where this is infeasible. If that is the case, you must first verify the task is covered by the COVID JHA posted on site. Face coverings are mandatory on all Bowden projects and must be worn at all times unless you are working alone in the cab of a vehicle, working alone in a room, alone at a workstation where social distancing boundaries have been physically marked, or if you are eating or drinking. This will be strictly enforced. Hand wash stations and hand sanitizer are also available for your use, and we strongly encourage you to use them often. Bowton Construction is a drug-free workplace. All new Bowton employees must take a drug test and pass a background check prior to starting work with our company. Details of the program can be found in our general safety manual. First aid stations will be available on your project and will include a first aid kit, a bloodborne pathogen kit, a fire extinguisher, eye wash equipment, and evacuation air horn. Make sure you report all accidents and near misses to your supervisor immediately no matter how minor you think it might be. Proper and timely follow-up is a key element of our approach to safety on our projects. If we don't know about it, we can't address it. All trade partners and employees are required to participate in our weekly toolbox safety meetings and in the daily DIRC meetings to discuss site-specific safety hazards and concerns. Your feedback and involvement in these meetings is expected and welcomed. All sites will have a written fall protection work plan for any activity occurring at a height of 10 feet or more above the ground. Later in this orientation process, you will be asked to review your company's fall protection work plan, if applicable, and sign off that you understand the scope of work and safety requirements associated with it. This is a living document and must be updated as elements of the plan evolve in the project. Projects will be marked with exit signs and evacuation maps for your safety. Be familiar with them as well as the muster area for this project, as designated by the Bowden Superintendent. Please notify your supervisor of any unsafe conditions during the course of your day. We don't want you or your fellow workers to get hurt. Your input is valued, and we encourage all trade partners and employees to identify and suggest solutions to safety concerns at any time. Personal protective equipment is required on all projects. Hard hats and ANSI Z87 rated safety glasses with side shielding are to be worn 100% of the time. Anyone with prescription glasses must be able to demonstrate both the lenses and the frames are ANSI Z87 rated and have some form of side shielding 
or they must wear over-the-glasses protection that meet these criteria. High visibility garments are required for any work outdoors. Class 1 for routine daytime activity and Class 2 for low light conditions. Various other appropriate eye and face protection such as face shields will be worn when any activity creates a risk of injury. Some of these include welding, chipping, grinding, and use of powder actuated or other tools that may generate airborne projectiles. Over the ankle work boots with hard sole are required. Tennis shoes are not allowed. Full length trousers and a minimum of a t-shirt with at least four inch sleeves are required. Gloves should be worn for protection from sharp objects, chemicals, or abrasive materials as needed. For Bouton employees, cut resistant gloves are required when handling an open blade or sharp materials such as sheet metal. Earplugs should be worn when working in areas that make normal conversation difficult. Compressed gas cylinders need to be checked on a daily basis. Valve protection caps must be in place before transporting, moving, or storing cylinders. All cylinders shall be secured in an upright position while in use or being stored. Containers must be stored correctly and in designated locations only. Check hoses and regulators before each use. When stored, fuel gases must be kept a minimum of 20 feet apart from compressed oxygen or have an appropriately rated firewall. Proper surveys and testing are required when work is to be done in a confined space to determine whether the space will be permit required or alternate entry. Contact the Boughton Superintendent to coordinate before entering such spaces. Always inspect your electrical connections before use. If your electrical cords are damaged by cuts or exposed wires, they must be taken out of service immediately and either replaced or repaired by a qualified person. Wrapping damaged cords with electrical or duct tape is not permitted. Make sure you always plug into a GFCI outlet and only use heavy construction grade cords. Do not use homemade electrical devices or Romex type cords. Trenches four feet or deeper must be protected by sloping or shoring. A competent person shall be designated to evaluate daily the soil conditions and overall safety of the trench or excavation. Fall protection is strictly enforced on all Bouton projects. In Washington State, fall protection is required if you will be exposed to a fall of four feet or greater above a walking working surface, six feet in states governed by OSHA. If you are unsure about your situation, contact your supervisor prior to proceeding with the task. The four main types of fall protection are safety nets, which are a passive type of fall protection designed to catch a worker after they have fallen, to help prevent contact with the surface below and to prevent injury. Hole cover. Any hole greater than two inches must be covered, secured in place, clearly marked hole or cover, and be able to withstand four times the intended weight. Guardrails. If you need to take one down, you must coordinate with Bouton first protect yourself and others from falls while working, and reinstall when work is completed. Always verify reinstalled guardrail cables deflect no more than three inches when force is applied. Personal fall protection system. This will include a full body harness, some type of lanyard, whether self-retracting, adjustable, or fixed, and an anchor point. Anchorage points must be capable of supporting 5,000 pounds per person and must not be used by more than one person at a time unless part of a system that is designed for multiple users, such as an appropriately rated horizontal lifeline. Personal fall protection systems must be visually inspected by the user prior to each use. Remember, evaluate your fall clearance and select the various elements of your system with care. The average distance needed to safely arrest in the event of a fall from height is 18 to 19 feet. When in doubt, contact your supervisor. Safety data sheets, or SDSs, are available in the job trailers, either in hard copy or electronically. If you need information about a chemical on the job site, see the Boughton superintendent for assistance or call the number on the SDS poster provided by Boughton. Housekeeping needs to be maintained while on a project. A messy workplace can create a more dangerous environment for yourself and others. Please do your part to keep the project free of clutter and debris. Ladders need to be used properly. A-frame ladders need to be opened completely. 
stay off the top two steps. Straight or extension ladders need to be secured against tipping, be placed at a 4 to 1 height to base ratio, and extend 3 feet above the landing if being used to access an upper deck. Activities that generate respirable crystalline silica dust must incorporate some form of controls to mitigate exposures to employees. This is not optional. The easiest way to accomplish this is to reference Table 1 from Washington Administrative Code, or WAC, 296-840, which clearly outlines dust generating activities and tools and describes in detail what is required to legally execute the given task. It is critical to be informed and have a plan prior to beginning any work that will generate this hazardous dust. If you have any questions about what is required, ask a supervisor. Lift properly. Get a partner to help lift a heavy load. Taking a few minutes to find someone to help lift an object is a lot faster than a few months off work. Scaffolding must be inspected before each use. Do not dismantle any portion of a scaffold unless you have permission and are competent and trained to do so. No smoking outside designated areas. Foul language is not permitted. Tool usage. Use the proper equipment for any job you do. Make sure they are not defective or broken. Do not remove safety guards from equipment or tools. If a tool does not have a guard in place, don't use it. Take it out of service and place a do not use tag on it. A guard must be in place on all saws, cutters, and grinders. Seat belts. Always wear a seat belt when driving machinery. Never ride in the back of pickup trucks or on equipment. A fire watch is required when doing any spark producing work, such as welding and torch cutting, in areas where flammable materials are present. Make sure you protect others from your sparks, slag, and arc by using fire blankets, arc screens, good communication, and barricades to delineate hazard areas. Certain equipment must have documented daily inspections. These include forklifts, backhoes, cranes, swing stage scaffolds, large scaffolds more than one tier high, and personnel material hoist lifts. Make sure backup alarms are working properly. If not, the equipment must have a dedicated spotter until the backup alarm is fixed. Make sure you park only in designated parking areas and be courteous to neighbors on the job site. Do not work outside your designated work area without supervisor permission. Emergency evacuation. If an emergency evacuation is needed, notify a Boughton Construction Supervisor. If there is not one immediately available, go to a first aid station and use the emergency air horn. Once the emergency air horn has been activated, notify others of the situation and then coordinate with site supervision to establish the correct evacuation route. All employees must go to the evacuation assembly area for instructions from your supervisor. Radios and music players are not allowed on the project, and cell phones may only be used during break times. If you encounter any substance that is or may appear to be asbestos, stop work and notify a Boughton Construction Company supervisor immediately. Again, thank you for your attention. We're excited to have you on our team. If you have any questions about Boughton's policies or working safely on this project, please contact a Boughton supervisor. Stay safe out there.